Continuing in our holiday celebration, we had so many great shows that we talked about for our holiday spectacular that we couldn't fit them all in. So welcome to a bonus episode of That Was a Show? In keeping with our efforts to be inclusive, we're going to celebrate Refrigerator Day. Here's three more holiday-themed sitcom episodes from the 80s and 90s. Everyone enjoy. It's a Festivus miracle. (laughs) That was a show? The podcast about failed or forgotten sitcoms from the 80s and 90s, starring Bryn Burney, Aaron Yeager, and Andrew Helmer as Barry. A Radio Gizmo production. I'm very excited to talk about this one, and I know you guys remember it. Oh, I saw it in your list, and I got (laughs) so excited. So it's from the ABC classic sitcom uh, that is kind of from the Henson world, Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. (laughs) It's Refrigerator Day. So Refrigerator Day is the dinosaur's Christmas. So it's their equivalent. It's their most important holiday of the year. And what they do is celebrate the origin of the refrigerator and how it changed the culture of dinosaurs. And so they actually decorate their fridge and they decorate their home with little fridge shaped decorations. <laughs> and like it's wow. just it's awesome. I really love it. I and need to rewatch this show. It's so good. It's so good. Like Dinosaurs uh, is so good. It's very funny. And what I love about it is it's a completely secular holiday. If you yep. think about it, it's completely secular. It's it's from like the most practical source of human history. It's literally celebrating when they could stop roaming as a species. They describe it and they talk about the legend of Fridge Day as the the <laughs> moment in time when dinosaurs finally could stop traveling and could stay in one spot and start up a stable home because of cold storage. <laughs> because of food preservation. Yeah, because yeah. of food preservation. Because they weren't yeah. constantly searching for new food. So, yeah. And, it, and it's really funny because they buy gifts and they have time off and they get a fridge day bonus. And basically Earl, <laughs> the, the uh, patriarch of the family, he doesn't get his usual fridge day bonus. And oh so, my god! And yeah. that's such a trope it, it that we're going to talk more about later. Yeah. So basically, he doesn't get his fridge day bonus, <laughs> and the family all decides to return the gifts that he bought so that they could pay their bills. Their fridge gets repossessed in the middle of the episode, <laughs> so it's very devastating because that's like the symbol of the holiday. In addition to being a very practical and important uh, fixture in the house, so it's wheeled away, and then they get they get the fridge back. Everything's fine, but. But they also do a little weird family pageant in the middle of it where they're commemorating (laughs) the holiday. And it's how they get Earl to feel better about their situation. And they're like reminding him of the true meaning of Fridge Day. (laughs) (laughs) Dinosaurs does so many great episodes like that where they they're like, oh, we're going to talk about something really modern. And then they always have a great way, a great spin on it. Yeah. Just to. Yeah, Dinosaurs is such an underrated show. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and also and also has the saddest fucking ending of any oh sitcom God. ever. Oh god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not go there. It's it's a bummer. Well, I think we can all assume what happens, <laughs> kind of like how we can guess the ending of the movie Titanic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just the way it's it's the way it is. Plus, yeah. they're basically they so yes, the dinosaurs die off at the end of Dinosaurs, uh, but it's through their own Basically through pollution, like through global, it's global warming that basically oh, wow. kills them. Yeah, there's a lot of good messages in that silly show. Like you guys yeah. should all check it out again if you can't find it anywhere online. And it's it's full on Henson. It was a Henson production. Yeah. It was a Jim Henson workshop put on it. I mean, obviously, I mean, it wasn't Jim because Jim had passed at that point, but. I mean, man, that company was firing on all cylinders in the in the early 90s. And of course, if you are going online and looking into dinosaurs, <laughs> do yourself a favor 
and I look up the say. hypnotized music video recut from the show Dinosaurs. Just look up Dinosaurs Hypnotize. It is one of the funniest things ever yeah. crafted. It's still one of the favorite, my favorite things that has ever been on the internet. All it, right. It's basically, you <laughs> Barry, know. Barry, have you not seen this? No, but it, I will also the, watch this it's later. The, it's, it's Hypnotize by and, Notorious B.I.G. But Earl is, is, is basically dancing. dancing and singing to it. And the lip sync works so well. <sighs> it's, it's, it's perfection. Absolute I'll perfection. I'll check it out. Yeah. That's our what? gift to all of you is uh, letting you know about this this uh, YouTube video. So my third pick for a show is from Seinfeld. I've been waiting so many episodes of our podcast to finally have an excuse to talk about Seinfeld. I I love that you think that we haven't talked about Seinfeld on this <laughs> podcast. We've talked about the show. That's adorable. But we haven't gone in detail on the plot of an episode before. Yes. So initially I was torn between two possible Seinfeld episodes to pick. One of them was the Red Dot, which of course has the Hennigan's No Smell No Tell Scotch. And H E double N I. You know it. <laughs> and then here's a little trivia question. George is trying to pretend he actually reads real literature to get a job at Pendant Publishing, and he makes up a book by author Art Vandelay. Barry, can you guess the title of the book? Oh. Or Bryn? Venetian Blinds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a oh, that's uh, good. But that's instead, good. I decided to go with season six, episode 10, The Race. And we know right off the bat this is a Christmas episode because Jerry's opening stand-up act is a bit about Christmas trees. The A story is about Jerry's mythical, legendary status as the supposedly fastest kid from his high school. He's dating a woman named Lois, and her yeah. boss, Duncan Meyer, went to high school with Jerry and George and for years has believed that Jerry cheated on the day of the big race and challenges Jerry to a rematch. I choose not to run. <laughs> But we're not here to talk about that plot line. We're here to talk about the B story, wherein Kramer's friend Mickey is a department store elf and gets Kramer a job as Santa. <laughs> meanwhile, I remember this. Yeah. Meanwhile, Elaine is dating a communist, Ned, who <laughs> convinces Kramer that the department store is exploiting their workers. Kramer attempts to educate a child about his newfound beliefs about fair worker treatment and gets both himself and Mickey fired from the store after the kid accuses him of spreading communist propaganda. Elaine gets Ned blacklisted from Hop Sings, his favorite Chinese restaurant. And I've seen this episode many, 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 many times over the years. Uh, but when I watched it initially as a kid, I didn't fully understand the context of that plot point. And it's only several years after watching this for the first time that I learned enough about the history of the Hollywood blacklist and the significance of writers putting a plot like that into a sitcom that it actually <laughs> carries a lot more weight as far as commentary than I thought when I was young. <laughs> Eight hours of jingle belling and ho ho hoing. I bet that beard itches, doesn't it? Do you think when you get a rash in January, Coleman's will be here for you with a medical plan? <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, one other little bit of trivia here, according to info that's revealed in the DVD bonus features, the shooting script for this episode was 70 pages long. Oh, oh wow. wow. And that's not a first draft. That's the shooting script. And yeah. so numerous scenes were deleted. And in fact, an entire subplot was cut out where apparently Kramer helps George obtain the visa to travel to Cuba at the end. <laughs> and a scene where Kramer defends his skinny appearance as Santa to get the job at the department <laughs> store. So this is a, a good example of a typical season six episode of this show where the rhythm of the banter is really spot on perfect. And I, I still laughed out loud many times watching this for, mm -hmm. I don't know, the 20th time, 30th <laughs> time. I've seen it so many times. But the race is among the best 22 minutes of comedy ever committed to film. <laughs> I I mean you could you could definitely nominate a lot of Seinfeld episodes to be just perfect 22 minutes of comedy. <laughs> this one's just so tight. Any Seinfeld episode that's got uh Danny Woodburn's Mickey in it is is already extra special. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right. Okay, me, me, yeah. me. Yep, go for turn. it, Barry. Okay. <laughs> 
So for my last episode, I chose an episode of Boy Meets World called A Very Topanga Christmas. <laughs> I was a huge Boy Meets World fan, um, and I'll, I don't, I'll, I'll level with people out there. Uh, I still am. I mean, I don't watch it all that much, but anytime as an adult I've managed to catch an episode of Boy Meets World, I'm always shocked by how funny it still is. Um, a lot of it is performance, but the scripts are pretty funny. Like the dialogue is pretty, pretty good. This episode was a little was a little on the rough side to watch because it involves some of the worst parts about the show, which is just how weird the central relationship between Corey and Topanga is. I mean, they're uh, ostensibly children who uh, have way too deep of a romantic relationship. Uh, so this first is this is their Christmas. They're in their it's probably mid high school uh, and they're already very deep into their to their romantic relationship. Topanga's parents uh, are going away for the holidays and the Matthews family has taken Topanga into the house uh, and she's going to celebrate Christmas with them. Now, as Topanga comes on board the Matthews house, it's weird because it's like suggested she has no idea what their Christmas is like, but the families have been so close for so long that none of this makes any goddamn sense. <laughs> um, she basically wants some of her own traditions brought into the Matthews household, which, you know, I think makes a lot of sense. She's just like, basically, she shows up. They're like, here, have some eggnog. She's like, oh, that's weird. We always have cider on Christmas. And then she's like, oh, you guys have an aluminum tree. We always have a real tree. You know, all these things. Oh, you guys open your presents on Christmas morning. We open them Christmas Eve. Just those little differences that a lot of families have. But Corey, being the man child that he is, <laughs> uh, overreacts and is basically spends the whole episode talking to Eric about how he's he's worried that this is going to be the rest of his life. The rest of his life he's going to be making concessions to this to this woman that he that he that he loves essentially. <laughs> um and it's not until he goes to visit Sean uh who's also got a subplot going on. Sean has just been reintroduced to his long lost brother. They've moved in together and they are having their first Christmas together and trying to establish their own version of Christmas with new traditions since it's all new for them. And Corey goes to visit them and Sean basically gives the advice that he usually gives Corey. Corey, like, you're an idiot. Topanga's way too good for you anyways. Just shut up and like maybe make some concessions every now and then, you <laughs> moron. Um... It's a pretty funny episode in general. Uh, you get to see weird things about these characters that you hadn't really learned before. For one is that Mr. Feeney comes over every Christmas and reads the entirety of A Christmas Carol to them. And he's done it for years and nobody's ever asked him to. That's weird. <laughs> oh, it's just Feeney. It's just it's just Feeney all over, man. It's Feeney Aww. all over. Um, it's, uh, you know, Corey's father gives a, a nice little speech about like how, you know, he realized very early on in his relationship with his wife that sometimes people are different and that sometimes, you know, you're going to make concessions, but it doesn't matter because, you know, you love them and it's about building a life with somebody. Corey doesn't really take any of this to heart because he's just Corey and he just complains all the time. But also it's kind of weird that they're making this all so serious like they're just teenagers <laughs> like but that was the whole that I was know. all of it this is in season 5 so i feel like uh for anybody out there who remembers uh boy meets world this was the season where Corey and topanga break up uh, oh because, yeah because because Corey kisses linda cardellini ooh i i guess maybe this is the writers sprinkling in bits of the relationship not quite working out beforehand but it just it's so weird it's so weird to just <laughs> they're they're too serious about each other i mean i guess that's high school relationships in general everything is like the end of the world but it just seems so weird watching it as an adult because you're just like oh my god just shut up <laughs> you're 16 yeah also, neither of you should be making decisions. You, there, there's adults who live in that house yeah. and maybe they don't want to go buy a new tree. <laughs> so that was my episode. <laughs> we really hope you enjoyed these bonus shows as much as we had fun talking about them. Thank you for listening, not just to our holiday spectacular, but all year long. We'd love for each of you to take a moment to rate and review the podcast if you haven't already because it'll help more people discover that was a show. And if there's someone in your life who you think would enjoy listening, tell them about it. 
Podcasts like this one spread mostly through word of mouth. Most importantly, I hope you all keep safe and share some smiles. Thank you to all the frontline workers, especially in hospitals, who don't get a break over the holidays and who are working harder than ever to help people and save lives. We appreciate you and we love you. And cut to credits. That Was a Show is created and hosted by Bryn Burney, Andrew Barry Helmer, and myself, Aaron Yeager. It's a production of Radio Gizmo in Toronto, Canada. Subscribe, rate, review, and share. Follow us on Instagram and tell your friends about it. That Was a Show? Radio Gizmo.